Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar on Cleveland Steamer Restart, Repair, and More. I'm Kyle Guybe with the marketing team at Partstown, and I'm joined by our presenters Joe from Wellbuilt, Joe Nicholson, the Senior Product Sales Manager for Cleveland, and Wayne Lemke, the Director of Sales for Wellbuilt Kitchen Care Americas. During today's webinar, Joe will begin walking you through different types of Cleveland steamers and then go through some tips and best practices for restarting, maintaining, and troubleshooting Cleveland's world-class line of steamers. Later, Wayne is going to provide some important information on well-built kitchen care and how the kitchen care team can support customers as they maintain their equipment. At Partstown, safety is our number one core value. So before we get started, we wanted to remind everyone on the line that if you have issues with your equipment performance, or questions about any of the procedures discussed in this presentation, we strongly recommend that customers contact a factory authorized service agent who can help with your specific unit and all your commercial kitchen equipment needs. And now let's turn it over to Joe. Uh, the one thing I wanted to start out with today is uh, kind of telling you about you know the different kinds of steamers that Cleveland has and I think this is a little bit important to understand because we have three different categories of steamers there are boiler less steamers which the bottom of the compartment is has water in it and we heat that with gas or electricity and we create the steam right inside of the compartment this is why we call them boiler less steamers the next style is the generator steamers. It has a stainless steel uh, steam generator. It, it is not a boiler. It does not have any pressure in it, but um, uh, we deliver that steam to the compartment from the generator. Uh, it, it, it doesn't have water inside of the compartment like the boiler less. And then we also have the boiler based steamers. These have a 15 PSI pressure boiler that's down below. These are very powerful. Um, you can actually drive a uh, direct steam kettle off of these. So there are three different types of steamers, three different animals. And uh, on the next slide, we're going to tell you a little bit more about uh, the guidelines for selecting the, the proper steamer. Uh, when you look at the boiler-less steamers, and that's the one that makes the steam inside of the compartment, these are very good for doing batch cooking, okay? Because you generate the steam inside of the compartment, um, they're not good when you open the door and close the door every couple of minutes because you lose all of that steam that's inside of the compartment. Uh, as you look across the top, it says increase steam production. From there, we move over to a little faster unit, which is our generator unit, that's our steam craft and Gemini series steamers with the generator in there. Um, these are ideal for large K through 12 schools, nursing homes, hospitals that are doing medium to heavy batch cooking and you can do a la carte. A la carte means you're doing individual portions. That means you're gonna be opening the door possibly every couple of minutes. Um, so that's why you need a generator which holds that steam inside of the, the generator. You don't lose it, all your steam when you open the door. Uh, even faster yet, you go over to the uh, boiler units where we have the classic convection, convection pro and the pressure steamers. Uh, these are even faster yet because they have 15 PSI of steam pressure stored up in the boiler and allow you to uh, uh, really do super high volume production. Next slide, please. So after your steamer has been maybe shut down for a while and it's time for you to fire back up, uh, there are some things that you need to go through. And uh, the first thing is, you know, make sure that all of your utilities are connected and turned on. I know in a lot of kitchens sometimes, uh, they will do some cleaning. They might actually disconnect the unit, pull it away from the wall, clean the floor, put it back. So when you go to, to turn it back on, you got to make sure that the unit is plugged in, number one. And then number two, uh, 
it may might be plugged in, but you have to make sure the electrical breaker is on as well. The next thing is to make sure that your water lines are turned on. It's very typical in most installations to have a, uh, a valve that you can turn the, the water off and on to the unit in case of an emergency or maintenance purposes. And then number three, if it's a gas appliance, make sure that the gas line is plugged in and the valve is on. In the bottom right-hand picture, you'll see a, a, a gas connection. It's pretty typical in a kitchen. You see there's a red-handled valve there, and it usually has a disconnect. Make sure that if, if that gas line has been disconnected, you've got that plug back in, and uh, it is connected. Next slide, please. Okay, so after all those are on, uh, you're going to go to the front of the steamer and you're going to turn the unit on. It's typical for us to have an on-off switch. And so when you press the uh, on or the top portion of the switch, you're going to have an indicator light that comes on. Or on some of our steamers, you're going to have a handle that you're going to rotate in a, a clockwise position to get it to the on position. And there will be an indicator light next to that to tell you that it is turned on. Um, if you're looking at a, a gas unit, uh, you might have air on the line, okay? So you're going to wait to see if it lights. If not, you may have to turn the unit off and wait a minute or two and then turn it back on. And you might have to do that a couple of times to make sure you get the air out of the line. Once the air is out of the line, you're going to be getting your natural or your LP gas delivered to the ignition system of that unit and at that point it should ignite and start to uh, uh, make steam. Now once you, you get to that point where you uh, it fills with water and, and ignites, you can set the timer for two minutes and put the timed manual switch in the timed position. So what's going to happen now is that that steamer is going to start producing steam and when it does, it's going to deliver that steam into the compartment. Once it uh, sees that steam for two minutes, it's going to count down. And when finished, the timer should buzz for three seconds. Okay, once it buzzes, you know that that unit has been preheated and you're ready to go. So that's how you're going to start up uh, a steamer that might have been shut off for a while. Now, one of the, the uh, other considerations of steamers is maintenance. Uh, if you look at our uh, uh, instructions for a steam generator, one of the uh, things that we recommend is a blowdown. Okay? What that means is that uh, every so many hours of operation, let's say every four hours, or maybe you, you did a, your prep in the morning, and before you go into the uh, lunch, you turn it off. That's the blowdown procedure. So you turn it off either by the handle or that switch. That's going to allow all that water that's mineralized now to go down the drain, and you let it set for about three minutes. You can turn it back on, and then it will refill with nice, clean water again. Um, if you do this, it will help not build scale in the uh, inside of the compartment. Uh, we recommend that you do this every four hours. Next slide, please. Another maintenance tip here is that if you guys are familiar with the uh, Cleveland Range steamer doors, ours is a two-piece door. You have the outer door and the inner door, which is a floating inner door. Um, we recommend that you rotate the inner door assembly. It's very simple to do that. Uh, if you look at the figure 5-1 on the screen, there is retaining pins on the back side of that inner door, and then you have keys hole slots on the outer door. By lifting that up slightly, you can take the inner door off. If you rotate that 180 degrees and reinstall it back onto the 
outer door, you can improve your gasket life by two times. It's kind of like rotating the tires on your car or rotating your mattress. Whenever you can rotate that and uh, you're going to extend the life of the uh, gasket. Uh, when that gasket has seen significant wear, uh, another tip here is that with a 7 16 inch wrench, you can take the four bolts out of that inner door and you can take the, uh, the metal plate off the front. You can remove the gasket. You can actually flip the gasket over so you're not going to be using the back side of the gasket and you can get another two times the life out of the gasket on the, uh, the Cleveland steamer door. So essentially, if you rotate the door, you rotate the gasket, you can get four times the life of that gasket. Next slide, please. Uh, one of the biggest problems with steamers is water, and it's the uh, what's in water, which is dissolved solids, and it's the lack of maintenance that goes along with it. It's the worst enemy you can have. So whether you have a boiler steamer, a generator, or a boiler, you need to descale uh, that steamer with, uh, depending on the usage and the water quality, it's all going to come down to how much scale are you making. You can actually... Uh, uh, take a little handhold plate off of that and inspect inside of that generator, figure out how often you need to do that maintenance. Uh, on the picture here, this is an element that's covered in scale. The more scale you have in a steamer, the less efficient it will be. Next slide, please. Um, here's a picture of a uh, one of our stainless steel uh, generators this is a gas unit the top picture you can see inside of that handhold plate and you can see that uh, there isn't much scale inside of there at the bottom of that picture you'll see that that is filled with approximately eight inches of scale that is way overdue to be descaled so i uh, implore you guys to uh, try and do your generator deliming on a monthly basis at minimum, or uh, have some of your maintenance people uh, take a look and, and see how much scale is inside of that, and then uh, figure out what your maintenance schedule needs to be. Next slide, please. These are some of the uh, uh, ways that you can descale. You can do it manually. If you look at figure 6-1, you're putting a funnel into the descaling port of a generator unit and following the instructions using dissolve to scaler, which you can uh, get from Partstown. Um, and the uh, left side, this is a, uh, a, a different type of descaling for the same unit where you're using a pump and a hose. So you don't actually have to pour it down there. It's a little more user friendly, if you will. And for the boiler units, we also have a pump assembly that you can hook to the boiler and uh, circulate that uh, delimer inside of the boiler unit for more effective descaling. In a boilerless unit, uh, your daily cleaning is your preventative maintenance deliming. Uh, a lot of cases, when you take out the clean shield and you drain the water out of that boiler steamer, you can use white vinegar on a rag and wipe that plate down in there. You're going to see uh, a chalk on there, and that mild acid can um, really get rid of that scale that builds up. You do that every day, it'll stay nice and clean. Next slide, please. This is the boilerless. This is what I'm talking about. You can see there's a white chalky film on the bottom there. Um, on a boiler steamer, you should do this every day with the vinegar and water. Uh, you can clean off the little water level probes as well, and uh, it'll keep your boiler steamer in great working condition. Next slide, please. Uh, troubleshooting. Um, being that we have so many different kinds of steamers out there, and all the troubleshooting guides are a little bit different, I wanted you guys to know where you could get our troubleshooting guides. If you go to www.partstown.com, uh, you go into the upper right corner. There's a drop-down box. You can put in Cleveland. 
your model number, and then you could tell it what you're looking for. In this case, you're going to want the installation and operation manual, and it will pull it up for you. On the right side of the screen here is uh, Operator's Troubleshooting Guide, and we've kind of already gone over uh, some of these, like uh, the problem, power indicator light does not turn on. Uh, when the main power switch is in the on position, make sure that you have the uh, unit plugged in and the, the breaker or switch is on. Um, so it, we have all of these troubleshooting guides. We have a problem, a probable cause, and a remedy to get this uh, fixed. So I uh, tell you to, to go out to uh, Partstown if you don't have your installation and operations manual for your Cleveland steamer, and you can download it there. Next slide, please. Continuing on, this is what our operator's manual uh, use and care uh, looks like. We continue down. Uh, for instance, at the top, you have water leaking from the bottom of the cabinet. Probable cause, you might have a broken or a loose plumbing inside. At that point, go behind the steamer, turn the water off, turn the breaker off, and you're probably going to call your authorized service tech from Partstown to come out and take a look with it because you've probably got the broken or loose plumbing inside of the unit. So this continues down through to, to do all the different problems and cause and remedies. Next slide, please. Um, comes down to even if your food takes too long to cook, you need to uh, verify that the steamer is operating correctly. Um, you know, sometimes you get problems with people are using solid pans and covering the pans with uh, a saran wrap. Um, that is going to take longer to cook. Always use perforated pans if you can. Um, you know, uh, if you have water coming out of the D-steel port, the cap is missing uh, or the cap is loose, replace the cap, uh, so on and so on. So. Uh, if you do have any problems, please take a look at your troubleshooting guide, and this will solve probably 90% of your problems. Next slide, please. One of the biggest problems that I see out there is poor installations, and I've got just a few pictures here I wanted to share with you. Um, our drains on our steamers for countertop are inch and a quarter NPT. On our floor model, they're inch and a half. You should never reduce those down like somebody did in this picture here. Uh, additionally, uh, that is the drain, and if you will notice, the plumber has installed it running uphill. Uh, don't ask me why a plumber would install a drain running uphill, but it's not going to drain. So uh, keep an eye out for issues like that uh, if you're having problems with your steamer. Next slide, please. Here are some uh, bad installations as well. In the top uh, left picture, you will see two of our steamers. Uh, those are floor model. They're mounted right next to each other. Um, the, the right side of the uh, panel, or control panel, is the side that you need to access to do service. You can see they only left about an inch of space in between those steamers, and that is not enough space to get in there and work on that unit. Additionally, this happened to be in a, uh, a hospital. Uh, they bolted these steamers to the floor to even compound the uh, issue with uh, having access to work on that. Uh, down below that, you'll see a steamer that has been uh, mounted right next to a, uh, a range that has uh, a flame right next to it. Uh, that unit, especially the control side with all of the electronics, is not going to survive in a hot environment like that. If you can't touch the side of that steamer, that environment's too hot for it. The middle picture here is steamers that have been installed over a floor drain. Uh, you notice the steamers do have vents on the side that's to allow cooling in, uh, cooling air to, to get in there and cool off the unit. So you can, you know, have it uh, maintain a nice long life. 
Uh, but when it's over a drain like this, you're going to get all the water vapor that's going to come up inside of there. And if you look at that bottom right photo, that's what the boiler looked like when you opened the doors. Um, they aren't going to survive in an area where that's over a drain. They're going to pull that moisture up, and it's going to uh, rust the inside of that unit. And the uh, uh, top left here is a, a steamer that has been mounted over a griddle uh, right next to a fryer and right next to a broiler. Uh, the D-scale port is way up on top. You can just barely see it above the little yellow sticker on the door. I doubt that they can even get up there and do the proper deliming that they need to on this unit, plus the fact that it's in a super hot environment. So uh, these are all examples of bad installations. If you have something like this uh, in your kitchen, you probably want to rectify it so that you don't have any future problems. Next slide, please. I have this little area here about uh, good advice, and this is true for you know everybody steamer out there. We have a timed manual switch on the control panel of all of our steamers. When you put it in the timed mode, you can use the timer that's that's on the front. I implore you to always use it in the timed mode, not in the manual mode. When you put it in manual mode, that means it's going to be running all the time that unit is turned on. Okay, so it's a 100% duty cycle. Uh, when I find go into kitchens and I see them using it at that, they say, well, I want it ready when I want to put my next pans in there. And I tell them, you don't have to do that. We have a heat standby thermostat on our units. It'll keep the water just below boiling so that when you put the product into the uh, steamer and close the door, it will only take seconds for it to be generating steam inside of the compartment. When you put it in manual mode, you're going to be using a lot of water, a lot of gas, and a lot of electric. And uh, when I see this in kitchens I and people tell me that they want it ready, I tell them, well, do you leave your car running out in your parking lot so when you leave after your shift, it'll be uh, with the air conditioning on, so it'll be nice and cool? They go, oh, no, that's stupid. I'll be wasting all that gas. Same thing with a steamer. You don't need to do that, okay? Just use the uh, uh, timed mode and the timer, and you will build a lot less scale. When you can, blow down the steamer whenever possible after every shift, after every four hours, whenever you can do that. It allows the highly mineralized water to be flushed down the drain, and you will make less scale, thus uh, you know, lengthening the time in between your preventative maintenance descales. Always use water filtration when you're working with uh, any equipment that uh, uses water, whether it's an ice machine, a steamer, a combi oven, uh, a beverage system, you know, always filter the water, okay? The reason for that, and if you look at the little chart here, just to show you your loss of efficiency, if you have, uh, you know, like a credit card thickness of scale, you're going to be losing 11%, okay? You're going to be using 110 cubic foot of gas per hour more than if it was a nice clean unit. And if you look at uh, three quarters of an inch, 90% loss of efficiency. So. Uh, really uh, work on, on uh, doing your preventative maintenance, filter that water, and maintain the filter as well. By the way, on a side note, just want you guys to know that when you buy a new Cleveland steamer and you buy one of our OptiPure water filtration systems, you will get a second year warranty free of charge. Last but not least, we also covered this on this page, is that rotate that gasket uh, every day at night and uh, leave the door open at night. Uh, if you close that door, it's going to get a memory to it. It doesn't need to be open. Leave the door open. It's going to allow the inside of that compartment to dry out and it's not going to smash that gasket. So your gasket's going to last a lot longer. Next slide, please. Um, wanted to talk about a few um, installation issues. Uh, people ask me a lot of time, you know, what's the, the water pressure you should look at? Uh, we're looking for a minimum of 35, a maximum of 80 PSI 
Uh, people want to know if they can use hot water. No, you have to have cold water. We have two water supplies. Both need to be cold. Uh, what's the maximum drain pipe length, the number of elbows? We say 12 foot and three elbows and never ever reduce the size of the drain. Uh, if you do, you might get steam coming out of your doors. That's because it can't vent itself correctly uh, through the drain if you reduce the size of it. Next slide, please. Um, can all Cleveland gas equipment be hooked up to GFIs? Only, um, one of our, our uh, steamer models, the uh, Steamcraft 5-pan, uh, our kettles and the skillets are the only ones. The other ones are going to be need to be hardwired in the areas that have GFIs, and that's how you get around that. Um, and then people always wonder, what is the maximum natural LP supply pressure? It's 14 inches of water column. So if you have more than that, you're going to have to put in a pressure reducing device from there. We can reduce it down to the working pressure that that gas appliance needs at that time. Next slide, please. Uh, just wanted to tell you something real quick that, uh, you know, we do. Our steamers are heavy duty. I've had people mention to me, boy, your doors are hard to close. They're made to slam. Uh, a lot of uh, kitchens, commercial kitchens I go into, uh, let's say it's a red lobster, they're getting out uh, a, a whole pan of crab legs. They have it in their hands. What do they do? They kick the door closed. Uh, our doors are made heavy duty. In fact, the hinges, the pins are probably about the size that's holding your car door on at home. So for that reason, we have a three-year steamer door warranty. Uh, if you're a K through 12 school, we give you a three-year warranty with uh, for purchase of a filter. Okay, so you get two years buy a filter, you get the third year. If you are not a K through 12 and and uh, just a normal uh, user, you get uh, one year parts and labor, get a filter, you get two years. All right, but um, you can get the water quality analysis uh, done through Kitchen Care. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, just, I'm not going to go into detail on this, but when you get a Cleveland steamer, you're going to get the best warranty of, of any steamers that are out there. Uh, and uh, um, that's all I'm going to say about this here. Next slide, please. Um, the, these are our OptiPure water filters. Uh, we have all kinds of different solutions out there for all different kinds of water that you have. We've got the uh, the QT1 for boilerless units. We have the, uh, uh, the QTS X2 for the high hardness applications when you have more than 170 parts per million and a pH that's less than 8. Uh, you've got the QT1 uh, dash CR for boiler and generator steamers. That does give you some uh, chlorine reduction and chloramine reduction. The only way to get rid of, um, you know, all of that stuff is to go to a, a RO or otherwise called a reverse osmosis filter. We have those in different sizes from 70 all, all the way up to 350 gallons per day. So uh, once again, you know, always filter your water. Get a filter from us, you'll get a, an additional one-year warranty from Cleveland. So with that said, I would now like to uh, turn this over to Wayne Lemke. He's the Director of Sales for Kitchen Care and Well-Built USA. Hey, thanks, Joe. I appreciate you uh, sharing all that information with us. Um, some really good information and, and tips and helpful use. Um, I am with uh, the Well-Built Kitchen Care team. Uh, we're the aftermarket brand for Well-Built, and uh, we do various things to support all of our different brands. And, and let's talk specifically about Cleveland and how we'll, we support the Cleveland brand. So uh, next slide, child, please. 
So you can come and visit us at our, our website, uh, wbtkitchencare.com. There you'll find our self-help library where we have a lot of downloadable documents, kind of the stuff that Joe was talking about. We have it also available there as well as on Partstown. We also have self-help videos. Uh, you'll find some very useful videos and, and tips in our library. Uh, you can also use that for locating your local service agency. We have our FAS locator there. And then you can also use that site for warranty registration. When you get a new Cleveland uh, unit, you can go right there and register your equipment to assure that you either get the two years, the one year, or the three year uh, labor and parts coverage for it. Um, also, which you, you can also contact us, uh, we have our technical support team, uh, technicians that are live and they, they take your calls and will, will help support or answer any questions that you have. Uh, you would call us at our 844-724-CARE, C-A-R-E, phone number 2274. Um, and then you just have to follow the prompts. Uh, you'd want to hit number two for technical support and then it'll ask it for the hot or the cold side and then eventually for the Cleveland. So you've got about three prompts you have to go through to get to our technical support teams. They're there to answer your questions and, and help you uh, sort through any issue that you might have. Then we also have on our website uh, a way for you to get services available uh, for purchase with your equipment. You know, we offer installs. We'll offer plan maintenance programs for your equipment that can be purchased at the same time. It's also a good way to contact us for your free startup that you get with the purchase of any new Cleveland piece of equipment, um, where we will actually have the service agency come out, assure that it's installed properly and uh, functioning as designed. Next slide, slide please. Through our partnership with Partstown, we make sure that all of the offerings and things that Joe was talking about, all those um, necessary items are available through Partstown for our customers. You get your genuine OEM parts and also your cleaners and protectors and, and the descaling chemicals. So we put together kind of a list over on the right hand side showing you the different options of, of what's available and with the part numbers there. Because the descaling solution that Joe, Joe was explaining and, and the reason for it and and the necessity of it is available through Partstown. You can get a, a carton of 12 16 ounce bottles of concentrate and that's equal to one gallon of the dissolve that's out there. Uh, you can get a, a carton of six gallons. Partstown also sells the dissolve by one one gallon at a time. Um, the other thing I want to note is that the anode assembly for those with the boiler bases it is available through Partstown. And this uh, this is necessary and it eats up a lot of the, the scale internally, electrolysis, and it, it helps preserve the life of the boiler. Um, and then, of course, the other, the kits that Joe was talking as far as depending on the piece of equipment, what you need to, to actually uh, do the descaling are also available there. Um, we also have uh, replacement filters and and also the Cleveland accessories that may be needed, the extra racks or something if your wire racks go. They're all available from Partstown. Um, you can go to their website and, and search. They have uh, everything you need under the sun. Next slide, Kyle. All right. Well, I just want to take a moment to thank you, Joe and Wayne, for your expertise. Um, thank you on behalf of myself and Parts Town and everybody on this webinar. For everyone joining today, more information on Cleveland will be heading your way in our post-event email, which will include the webinar replay and more troubleshooting tips. Parts Town is proud to be a master distributor for Cleveland, along with several other well-built brands, and your one-stop source for all of your genuine OEM parts accessories, and consumable needs. We not only have the most in-stock, well-built parts on the planet, but we are also ready to ship same day. 
So we have a few minutes left. And um, if there are any questions, now is the time to get them into the chat or the Q&A. Uh, we do have one question so far. And um, Joe, I think this one is for you. So somebody is asking what exactly is involved in the blowdown process? The blowdown process is, is very simple. It's just turning the, the steamer off. When you turn it off, it's going to allow the drain valve to open. All that highly mineralized water is going to go down the drain, and uh, you wait about three to five minutes for that to take place. And then you turn the unit back on, and it's going to refill with nice, clean, filtered water so that you won't produce as much scale if you left that highly mineralized water in your steamer, boiler, or generator all day long. So uh, recommend that you do that uh, between shifts or, or at least every four hours. Very simple. Just turn the unit off. Loud and clear. Thank you for reinforcing that, Joe. I feel like that's a, a very important component of, of what we discussed today. So I just wanted to give a second here in case there are any more questions that are coming through. Feel free to jump in if you have any questions for Joe or Wayne. All right, it looks like you two are just that thorough today, Joe and Wayne. So wanted to thank everyone again for attending today's webinar. Our contact information is on the screen for your reference. And uh, make sure to complete the short survey heading your way to let us know what you think. Your feedback will be helpful to inform us of the topics, format, and even the timing that best meets your needs for future events. This webinar was the second in our summer webinar festival series, and we hope you join us for the next one on July 14th for a webinar featuring our partners at Trollson and throughout the summer for great preventative maintenance and equipment troubleshooting content straight from several of the manufacturer partners and industry experts. Thanks also to our partners at WellBolt for your time and extremely valuable information provided today. Everyone, have a great afternoon.